Well, they wanted a simple 500 square foot addition. We thought, oh, he's willing to help us. Seems honest enough. This is about the worst I've ever seen in my life. What they're doing is they're throwing it up quickly. Uh, they're making it look like they're doing something. Look, they used the car jack. This is unacceptable. They supported the lintel with two two by fours. This is held up by broken brick. By next month, we'll have been out of the house a year. They had no intention at all of finishing this. Still in an empty, cold house that uh, has no walls, no plumbing, no heating. I've seen a lot of people lose 10, twenty thousand dollars. You know, not in the in neighborhood of a hundred thousand dollars. Think you can't even sell it. You know, and, and the thought of losing my home. What am I going to tell my children? You know, how am I going to get back in here? It's very scary. Mike Holmes, did they actually do this right? No, no, they didn't. Not buggers. You want a good job to keep me in shape? I'll be a contractor. God, I love my job. <laughs>he took over in October 16th and it was supposed to be 12 to 14 weeks so by next month we'll have been out of the house a year and we still don't have uh, anything <laughs> you know, we're still in an empty cold house that uh, has no walls no plumbing no heating we got a call from someone who who was having problems with him they gave us a warning but probably about two weeks before that I was getting kind of worried they should have been a little smarter there's no doubt about it but how do you know you know do you really believe that somebody's going to take you like that do you really believe that somebody is going to burn you for that kind of money I started checking him out I found out that there was about five people apparently that were after him there's no communication here. Contractor didn't say anything to you about studying, did he? He originally said he was going to stud. Then he said, um, no, we can work with what we have. I cannot drywall over this. This is impossible. Why it is out is because you'll never put strapping over an existing strapping because the existing strapping is not true. I didn't have to be because they put up the lath and then they plaster it out to uh, an acceptable level edge. I would have recommended right from the start that we take this down, we take the strapping off the wall, stud this with 2x4, insulate it, vapor bear, that way we have a breathing space in the back and we have a truer edge to go with. Drywall the walls first is absolutely incorrect. You drywall the ceiling first so the ceiling stays over top. It structurally supports the top layer of the drywall and you'll never, never see any cracking. What they're doing is they're throwing it up quickly. 
Uh, they're making it look like they're doing something. They had no intention at all of finishing this. This was get in here, do as little as possible, as little money out of their pocket as possible, and get out. And you can't even sell it. And then the bank tells you the house is depreciated because this is the condition it's in. No one is going to give you an estimate. You know, so to even borrow more money on it, you've got to finish. You know, and, and the thought of losing my home, what am I going to tell my children? You know, how am I going to get back in here? It's very scary. This really does me in. The first floor is higher than the addition. The second floor is lower. Take a look at this. Here they cut into this wall and they're supporting the lintel. You can see the integrity across the brick here that has dropped. They supported the lintel with two two by fours, laminated together, brought down on top of what do we see? Broken brick. This is real bad. A thief, as far as I'm concerned, that's what he is. And he lied to us. And I just hope he doesn't do this to anyone else because this is devastating to, to any homeowner. And he shouldn't be out there. He shouldn't be able to open up another business the next day. Watch your head. You have no heat, do you? Nothing at all. No plumbing, no heating. This should have been yeah. done months ago. It, well, it, it, the hole was months ago. They, they dug it and then left it. They put in the foundation wall, the cinder block, and they're completely unlevel from one side to the other. So they find out afterwards, after it's sheeted, after it's up, it's done. Oh, dear, it's on level. Take a look at this. Look, they used a car jack with two two by fours. Look at this. Oh my God, I've seen everything. They jack it up, they throw in shims. See the shims? Look at this thing. Oh my God, it's not holding anything. This is heavy. We're talking two floors of an addition sitting down on improper shims. Oh God, I gotta get out of here. I've had enough of this. The first thing I want to do is I want to clean up. We're going to clean this up. We're going to get rid of the garbage. We're going to start pulling the nails. We're going to do the plumbing in the basement. We're going to get that floor closed in. We're going to pull that wall down upstairs, fix the structure problem here with the unleveling. Bit by bit, we're going to get this so you can move in. Oh, that'd be great, Mike. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate everything. You're welcome. Thanks, Mike. We'll Thank see you. what we can do. You okay. keep smiling, okay? I'll try. Okay. okay. So we're looking at definite two months from, one, from this point on to finish this. This shows what kind of contractors we had here. Let's throw this up. Garbage. <sighs> what I'd like to do is uh, start clearing out this area, move the rounds away, open up the space, we'll get that piece of wood in my trailer. I mean, every day, these guys should do this. Every day, they should clean up. All the tools are put aside and they're clean. It's organized. Yeah. Yeah. Tony. Hey, Mike. Thanks for coming, man. What we're yeah. really going to do here is trying to fix the plumbing for one and get this hole filled back in. Well, whoever's done something here, I mean, it's all infested with roots. This clay here, you can see, is all cracked. We have to cut this back just to get the solid pipe. And depending on how far back it's cracked or if it keeps crumbling, we've got to keep digging. Clay hub right here. Heard that snap? Yeah. A little crunch. That's what we want. They didn't have a problem cutting the clay pipe. No, we cut it. We took out that crack section that was here. And we just dug back a bit. We got on the solid clay there. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep working your way back. Working my way back here to get this in. In the older days, they put up the wood lath across it and they plaster it and they create a nice true wall with the plaster. And these dummies, they go, they go and get uh, new strapping. They go right over the existing. I'll go get my level and you'll see how it goes like this. This wall can stay. We'll work with it. Normally, I wouldn't leave this up. We are looking at saving the client money here. This will stay. We'll work with this. We'll stud this. And we'll tie back into this wall again. All crowns gotta go out. Let's look at this. Let's talk about it in detail. You'll see there's a bow in the wood across here. That would be the crown. If I were to level on the proper side, you see that gap? That's because the crown's on this side. If I have the level on a crown side, what I get is a bowing motion. You see that? I cannot get an accurate reading. I want the crown on the outside of the wall so I can level the inside of the crown. In the last 20 years, I would say we've lost 
a lot of the really good workers out there, the guys that care. And that's what has changed it is money. Money has changed this. Piecework has changed the industry. Everybody's out there, go, 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 go. Let's make that money. My father uh, was a jack of all trades. And one thing he always said to me was, Mike, if you're going to do something, do it right the first time. Too many people don't care. And if it's my money, I want it done right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this block out. We have no choice. We're gonna run a beam right to the outside wall so we can pick up the weight of the outside wall. That beam will run right across here and we're gonna jack this whole level up. Well, this really uh, honestly pisses me right off. I mean, right from the beginning, you got the, the block guys laying in the foundation wall and they don't know what they're doing. Then you got the carpenters coming in, and unfortunately, they didn't use a level. Do you believe that? I don't. Okay. Well, we're ready to go ahead and put the beam in. Side up. That. Okay. On this side, where the kitchen is, we're going to have the kitchen counters along this wall. And if we don't level the side, you're going to see it. We're going to be lifting at least, if I were to guess, 10,000 pounds. You want a good job to keep you in shape? I'll be a contractor. Nice structural noises, eh? Well, yes, that's good for you. At this point, we're level. We've had the uh, plumbing inspected by the inspector. It's a pass. We have backfilled it with some earth up to approximately five inches away from floor height is what we want. We want about two to three inches of three quarter crushed gravel. Oh, we'd love to see a six inches of concrete, but it's just too much money. We want to make sure we compress it so we don't have any settling later once it's cemented. I need you to mix up, do a bag at a time, but do me a favor, get it from the back here because you can see that it's dropped down. Yeah. Pull it forward, I'm going to go upstairs. When we insulate this, you want to fit it. You don't want to pack it tight. It's, it's, it's not hard. It was designed to fit right in between 16 inch on center, just like that. We're still leaving a small airspace in the back. On the first and second floor of the house, we want that airspace. We want that wall to breathe. In the basement, we don't want it to breathe because we have heat low. Ground temperature 68 degrees, below four feet, and it's cool up above in the winter. So what happens is heat pushes the cool up and it causes condensation in the tops. All outside walls will be insulated. All outside walls have to be vapor barriered and tie into the ceiling. This is, this is a couple of guys that have a business of taking people. Uh, how they pushed the client to get more and more money. There are people out there that uh, are here to take you and man, they'll walk away. You know, he'll go home, he'll sleep that night. It doesn't even bother him. To put the plumbing back in this house, heating and plumbing will take about a week. Fixing everything up is going to take another week. Drywalling is going to take the time because you've got your drywalling, your plastering, and then all your trim work and your finishing work. So we're looking at definite two months from, one, from this point on to finish this. If we don't get it airtight around this box, again, the warm air can escape causing moisture inside the wall. And instead of using uh, the acoustic sealant around here where plastic meets plastic, we can use tuck tape, which has an R value of two. Yeah, but that is a sealed box. Well, we're just, we're finished in here for now and we got about 10 more rooms to go. Well, we're getting there. Unfortunately, we can't lay a charge, but our hands are tied. So by next month, we'll be out of the house a year. How am I gonna get back in here? They had no intention at all of finishing this. Yeah, we gotta cut the lock off here because the uh, knobs that were here before, they put on their own lock and they got the key, so I got a new key. Now that's a amount of junk that these guys had left, these poor people. 
This was Anna's favorite pot. This is depressing. Right out depressing. Yeah. Doesn't even put a dent on it. Dave and Anna had uh, standard hot water heating in the old rads. And they, they really wanted an air conditioning. So uh, I was able to talk them into putting in a whole brand new forced air furnace powered by natural gas. The very first thing that we had to do was drain the oil out of that oil tank so we could remove the tank in the first place. Natural gas is very safe, it's efficient. One thing I love about it is it's a constant supply. In the plans, you have the uh, ductwork vertical going up, going up here to the bathroom, correct? Correct. Any way I can get that over on this side, because what I want to do is I want to create a bulkhead in here, a bulkhead across the top, so now you can bring it up, feed it, and up to where you're going. Not a problem. It's a Coleman uh, single-stage high-efficiency furnace. We're going to be using a two-pipe system, which means that we'll be using uh, fresh air for combustion from outside. So we don't go in the chimney. This is direct for We're not fresh using air. the chimney at I all like here. That. Uh, there's a media filter inside, as you can see. It's a pleated media filter. The efficiency actually increases as the bigger particles that are captured actually capture the smaller ones. Well, they're, they're taking the uh, round five inch here and they're, they're, they're wrapping it with insulation and I just think that's the best thing you could ever do. I definitely want to tape these joints, all these joints here. Uh, Everything that I can see, I want to tape. Well, no, these cleats are made so that they can't come out, though. Yeah, but they do. No, they're made to lock in because the way they're, they're folded over all the way down here, right? All the way up there, so it's tightly sealed. It's nicely sealed here. We know that because it lo locks... The corners, yes. Yeah, it locks, but the corners. So, what the hell? You know, put the tape up all the way across, make it neat. Sure. So it looks good and we stop any uh, heat loss, period. This is great. 12 inch lens center, two by tens. It's a very strong structural floor. What that means is precisely 12 inches from one, the center of one joist to 12 inches to the center of the second joist. This is one thing they did do right. This is one thing, however, completely on level and slightly on square. 12 inch lens center is correct. When we're drywalling the ceiling, we want to make sure we have three guys. Two guys to hold it, one guy to screw it. It's just so much better. Forget all them jacks and everything else. This is a lot faster. We want to make sure that the screw is all the way up and not too far up because if you pinch it and go too far, it doesn't hold the drywall. The worst thing that I've ever seen is anybody that would drywall over strap. The cabinets were measured by strapping. We don't have a choice. I can build this up with two by four. The cabinet's got to be restructured. It's no good. I have to go with it. I don't like it, but I'm doing it. You know what, when a day goes according to plan, that's rare. The system does have its flaws, yes it does. We have the criminal code to go by. If the offense doesn't fit within the charges, unfortunately we can't lay a charge, our hands are tied. I understand that uh, there was work done and the investigator had looked at it and felt that uh, it definitely was not a, a fraud-related offense, a criminal fraud-related offense. The best way to educate the public is for people to understand what home renovations they are going to have done. Number one, get it in writing. Number two, understand what's on the paper. Number three, lay out your payment schedule. Number four, don't make that last payment till you're absolutely satisfied with the work that you've got. I know my money's lost. You just have to live with that mistake. Um, you don't really believe that it's happening to you. I checked them out as far as I could check them out, as far as you can obtain information. You just can't get information about these contractors. You pretty well have to believe what they tell you because they're only giving you references and you can only check how long their business has been around and that's about it. Normally, I don't like to use wafer boards simply because if it gets wet, it swells and it'll always swell up at the joints. We're going to have to knock the nails down, plane this area so we have a smooth, smooth overlay. Carpenters, eh? 
Uh, we're gonna drop three inch screws to the existing beams because what we wanna do is pull the existing subfloor tight to the beams. The carpenters over here forgot three things. They're level, they're square, and they're common sense. We got an inch and three quarter. You're at a brick at 186 and a quarter? 186 and a quarter. That's inch what I'm and here. three quarters. That's big. That's bad. When we lay these tiles down on an unsquare addition, the tiles are going square. So we're going to have to create an illusion with the tiles. That'll be a trick. <laughs> Assembly line. Before it's not perfectly true, it's a little humped. You have a little play, that's why you see me put the level down on top of it and push down to try and give it a nice straight edge. Once the tile goes down on top of that, because there's a gap in between, and you push down on the tile, it creates a suction gap with that. Go there. If you start at one end of the house like I am, and I continue this to the other end, and then I bridge myself just two, two rows of the tiles at a time, I'm guaranteed to stay within square. Now, you know, tile guys may argue with me and they all have their own methods. As long as you make it square, you've done it right. I gotta get this tile down because we got the kitchen cabinets coming in. So we're gonna finish off these tiles tonight, come back, route them tomorrow so the kitchen cabinets going on Friday. We gotta do a little bit of plastering where the cabinets are gonna go. And that's gonna keep us real busy for the next few days. By the time it's done, you know, that smile on their face is going to make it all worth it. We have the inspectors going on strike. We have so much happening. It's like, do I have a chance in hell of getting them in on the date that I promised them? The only thing I can do is do my best. Uh, normally, I'm not used to being late, period. I think we're going to be a little late. <clears throat> this has been tough because this is uh, shared by three of us. Um, I kind of left my husband and, and my daughters because I needed time to myself. I would say about another three to four weeks and we'll be moving them back in again. Well, they wanted a simple 500 square foot addition. By next month, they'll been out of the house a year. They had no intention at all of finishing this. Do I have a chance in the hell of getting them in on the date that I promised them? I think we're gonna be a little late. We have one busy day happening here. Good morning, guys. We uh, we have siding coming in today. The uh, garbage guys are coming to pick up the garbage in the back. We got the plumber coming in. We're going to install the tub, the sink. Uh, work, work, work around the clock. So much to do. I would say about another three to four weeks, and we'll be moving them back in again. What we have been able to put together for the homeowners was $20,000 would cover the material needed to get this place back together. $125,000 really to finish this for twenty grand. Um, I think they're going to survive it. Thank God, it is so much cooler than it was yesterday. 47 degrees Celsius with humidity factor. I was melting, it was just made for a really tough day. The bigger building stores today have really wiped out the custom cabinet market. Uh, they've made them quicker, they've made them cheaper. I still love custom no matter what. These cabinets, the uh, backing on them is only an eighth of an inch. It's all particle board laminated with maple. I like the sliders. I like the way the dovetails are on the drawers. So I'm, I'm rather impressed for a manufactured cabinet. Six weeks in, we got the place almost completely drywalled. Feeling a little better. So at the beginning, it didn't look like we had much of a, a chance on getting them back in too soon. But I'm feeling a lot better today and just knowing that uh, they're going to be back in their house within the next month. We'll have the sink in today. Not bad for a week. The order would be to do the drywalling, plaster it, uh, prime it and paint it, then install, then do, then do touch-ups. Kitchen cabinet guys only had a, a window of uh, two days, otherwise we're gonna wait six more weeks. So it was get the cabinets in and we'll work around them. We're almost there. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. At first I thought there wasn't a chance in hell. Now, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We would have been in real trouble because it was only supposed to take 16 weeks. So we were going to rent a place and live there. So we were lucky that my mother was uh, willing to take us in. We pretty well invaded her place. But, mm -hmm. uh, and here is our open concept living room, dining room, which is fairly nice. Can't complain. It's, it's a cozy area. I feel bad that I've taken over her condo. 
so it puts me in a very bad position. And then I don't know what she's thinking. Does she really want us here, or, or doesn't she? We've had all the ups and downs. Um, Christmas was kind of a disaster. Uh, well, uh, we had to move back and forth to get all the family together. And I just threw everything into a box, figuring, you know, I didn't bring stuff that I wanted to because I thought we were just going to move back in again, but we never knew it was going to take this long. <clears throat> this has been tough because this is uh, shared by three of us. My youngest daughter, Tamara, sleeps on the pull-out couch, and Dave and I sleep on the floor. And it's fun because every morning we have to struggle to get up, climb over this bed because we get up before Tamara does. Um, our other contractor, he was like, you're going to be in your room really soon, so don't worry, everything's okay, and stuff like that. And I believed him. I felt very, very guilty because I thought, oh, no, how am I going to be able to, to live with this for the rest of my life that I've lost his house? You know, are we going to make it through this marriage? Is he going to look at me as I'm a failure or... So that was probably the, the guilt. That was the worst part for me. It really, it got my mom really hard. She was just, she was just really upset. She just, when she would come home from work, she just went to her room. She just wanted to be alone. She was just so upset and devastated. This is my mother-in-law's room. And this is Nana's bed, Nanny's bed. Megan sleeps on that bed there with the tigers. It's a little snug, but um, otherwise she, she lucked out. I don't think we really realized what position we were in because I think before Mike came along, I think we were in the position where we pretty well had lost the house and, and just hadn't uh, mm -hmm. come to that realization yet. Back at Christmas time, I went through a really bad time. I did go to my brother's for three weeks because I couldn't handle it. And um, I kind of left my, you know, husband and, and my daughters because I needed time to myself. I, I just couldn't cope with it. I'm a lot better now than I was back in February. And I know there's a moving date, so I'm all excited about that. Got some boxes ready to pile up, you know, things in, and I won't look back. <laughs> Just go straight home. <laughs> now our, our jam set is going to be four and three quarters. Standard would be four and a half, so we're going to have to build it up a quarter inch. Sean is a great worker. He's, uh, you know how hard it is to find somebody that is so eager to do and learn. Um, make sure you pick up the doorstop because if we don't get a pre-hung kit, it's not gonna have a doorstop. I mean, he's on time every day. If it's not pre-hung, I have to buy the doorstop right. with it. I hear he dances well, too. Oh, yeah. I'll see you in about uh, 45 minutes, then. Very good, sir. Thank you. Yeah. No surprise here. The floor is completely on level. We want to do it where we put our brace in. By doing this, what happens is we, we've kept the door jam square to the door. If you were to put a shim just in on one side and nailed it in, you've actually changed the angle of the jam. We don't want that. All right, I can accept that. That's good. Because we're hinging it on this side and going in, the inside of the door will want absolutely flush with this surface. Never attach the other side until the door is on. We've uh, pre-cut the doorstop here. With the doorstop, it closes the gap and it does exactly what it says. Stops the door precisely where we want it, which is flush on this side. Just needs a handle and some casing, and she's beautiful. Yeah, well, we're under the gun. Three more days we got, and I just, I think it's too tight, because if we can just, you know, put it off till Tuesday, I can walk away and you walk in. How many days we got left? Three days. We have three days left, and we have a zoo here. Oh, we got the tiles in late last night. We had uh, four professional wood finishers in here and we've done a lot of trim got in the french doors in here got up the trim in here i got to get this fireplace installed get this trim all done we got these guys going going like crazy are we having a problem bringing that upstairs okay excuse me for a sec please yeah 
dolly. The dolly's downstairs in the basement. <laughs> so this won't take long. We put some valves on. Put the sink and taps in. Hook it up. People attempt things on their own and then find they can't do it. Uh, people won't vent things. They think as long as water is hooked up and would drain away, that uh, they're problem free. But even in a job like this, if it's not all hooked up right and vented properly, you get the gurgle, gurgle. You get things that just won't work right. They won't last. So the homeowner ends up with calling back plumbers for the maintenance. We love that kind of business. But if it's done right the first time, they should have very little problems. I have three brothers, and I was the only one that pursued a trade. And I questioned it at the time. Should I do a trade or carry on in school? So I'm happy I did this. I like it. We have the tub going here, three-piece tub. We have vanity sink, side cabinets, mirror, lights. going to be rather nice. We're going to create a, a brand new bathroom. There's not, no old stuff here. This is the outside of the wall uh, of the original. Right now, we have the new addition on the other side of this. So they've taken the window out. They've framed it in here, and they've done a really poor-ass job of it. This is a weight load. you got to look at this. A brick above, right up to the top. So we're going to double this up. I'm going to add another board in here. Bench. Can you do me a favor and start off with cutting me a piece of two by four, please? One of the most common things that guys do when they're doing bathrooms like this, they're gonna hide as much as possible. They're not gonna worry about insulating in the back. They're not gonna worry about using two by fours, which is the smartest thing to use. They're going to do what we see here. They're going to use strapping. They're gonna use two by twos, two by threes, all garbage. Let's do it right. Two by four, everything. We got another huge pile of junk here. We're getting rid of thanks to these guys here. Yeah, that's great. That's the way to do it, see? Uh, this is a great reason to use a sprayer. Uh, he sprayed this in 15 minutes. And try and brush it. Try and compete with it. Come on in. We'll go right to the uh, kitchen area here. Everybody is afraid to get a permit. They think the government's going to come in and uh, really cost them money. We're the uh, second opinion on site, so to speak, from the homeowner and the contractor. And our concern is that the work is done in accordance with the Ontario Building Code. They're going to save you money because they're going to make sure it's done right. What is this? That's the old uh, air conditioning line. i got to close that up. Oh. So make sure you put some Paper plastic barrier. before. Yeah. The permit really does help you at least maintain a minimum standard for life safety, for structural footings foundation, right on up through the roof. How much more is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. That just shows it's you amazing. how important vapor yeah. barrier is That's in the right. too. Yeah. Right? Hang on just a second, guys. Today we've got two days, so uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I haven't said we can't do it, but uh, everyone else seems to think that we can't do it. Bumps up floor, install. Yeah, well, we're under the gun, and uh, we have to jump with what we can. Uh, and my boss is, uh, he's a little, he's getting a little zoomy. I should have done it myself. A little bedazzled, but uh, yeah, we're gonna do it. We are really trying to get this done. We got a ton of people, so which means we're relying on these people. If we don't get them in here, we got a little bit of a problem. I'll be touching up a little bit of uh, lights downstairs in the basement. There's a couple of fluorescents I can put up, and I'm hoping that we can get the uh, stove in place. Do I have a little bit of playroom here? Quarter inch on each side. They didn't give us a brace underneath the counter for the clips which holds the top down. They just expected us to tie right in. They cut the cabinets here for the oven. They measured the back of it, which is obviously more shallow than the front. So then now this has to be recut for this to go in. We've been waiting four to five days for them to come back. We're gonna do it ourselves. I didn't call these guys in. I'm relying on a lot of people here. Plumbers, electricians, carpenters, uh, because I need them. And I just, I think it's too tight. They still gotta hook up another one. They still gotta get the flute in here. And I'd rather have it complete for them. I don't want them moving in here and we're still working around here. This one here. And so if I can buy, Another five days, it'll make a big difference. I hate this. I really do. Anna, it's Mike Holmes. How are you? Would you be comfortable waiting until Tuesday? Are you sure? I don't want you moving in here and then us coming in here and doing a couple more things. If we can just, you know, put it off till Tuesday, I can walk away and you walk in. That's what I need to hear. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Good. 
She's fine with that. She's happy. She's not depressed, and that makes me feel good. Yeah, we got the signing guys in here. Damn professional team, I must say. Well, for the most expensive siding on the market, it was put on one of the worst ways. <laughs> so we're gonna remove that. As you can see, the wood just under the shingles, you don't wanna see that. You don't wanna cover it up with uh, the east trough at all. You want that metal all the way up. So that's all coming down all the way around, and he's gonna, he's gonna bend and put up new fascia. The fascia's the front metal. The bottom's the soffit where it's breathable. I don't know who done it. <laughs> It wasn't a professional siding installer. Just lots of, lots of little things. Up in the two joints here, one should have went right through. They should have been actually run right through in both ways and then mitered. The gaps between the soffit here. If everybody stuck to what they know how to do, then, you know, it'd be better for the industry all around. Gary has put up new fascia across the uh, top there in the front. Uh, there's going to be no east troughs there. He's got the east troughs on the left and right. One more off the list and a few, few more to go. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, guys, it's almost lunch time. We gotta pick up the pace. We got three hours left. Hey, pile. Just on the front lawn. And then we gotta pull out the top side of the box and we'll set up on the front lawn again. I don't wanna do any cutting inside. Well, today is the day. It's the day that uh, I give in and Dave their house back. We got a million people coming in today for the finishing, painters, electricians, oak floor guys, uh, bobcat to do the backyard. We've been here solid. Seems like a year. It's only been two months. We got a mess to clean up today, let me tell you. Uh, we were very late last night, just uh, doing what we could to get it uh, ready for today. I was there until one. We're gonna finish up the painting, get it together. I'm quite confident we'll be done. Quite confident. We got about eight hours. Oh, that figures. It ain't gonna go. I knew it. I told him not to buy a medicine cabinet so big because the countertop is four feet, and this is over four feet. It's not gonna go. Uh, we got Tony coming in. Uh, he's gonna hook up the washer and dryer. We're gonna put the countertop in the uh, bathroom and get the sink in, the toilet in, and for the first time since we came in, there'll actually be a toilet. We'll have to run back and forth to the donut shop. Finish off the center of the window here. I'm creating a filler. Oh, yes. You can see the walls are so irregular. I've had to do quite the uh, fancy trim work here, so I'm just doing a filler and then we'll latex cock the rest. Okay, what we gotta do, sand these edges down, sand the face front, okay, and then he's gonna go ahead and uh, latex cock all of this. Tim. I really appreciate this maple floor. I like it. Not a problem. It's really nice. Flooring guys are doing great. Nice to have this help that we have. Again, hard workers. A lot of people are recognizing uh, with the width, a narrower board is more stable when it comes to expansion and contraction. And uh, you know, it looks good. And uh, the narrow width it works really well in smaller rooms. Yeah, the contractors left all kinds of garbage in here. Uh, we've had about five, six loads already picked up by these guys. We are going to have a toilet in the next hour. The last thing that you're going to have going in is fixtures. Okay, guys, it's almost lunchtime. We gotta pick up the pace. We got three hours left. Three hours. I'm gonna put the shower head on. That's all that's left for the shower. I'm gonna put two valves on for the sink. Pop the sink in, hook up the taps to drain. Put the valve on for the toilet. Put the floor flange on, set the toilet. And then we're done. Water will go on and then finish. <laughs> we're, we're under the gun. Yep. We're under the gun. I love it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it.
John, I really appreciate you coming and giving us a hand here. Uh, we'll just take it, we'll level it with the stairs, I'll move the barbecue, and I guess we'll pull the plastic out. Dave and Anna are gonna love you, even though they don't know it yet. Somebody cut the counter for us. We put those faucets together, We've hooked up the water. Water's on now to the sink, we just don't have the drain yet. 1.30, we need about two more hours, two and a half hours. I'll be fine with that. We're just about there. Tony's done. That is a wild man. He came in and done all his plumbing and he came in and beautiful fixture in the tub and nice sink. I love seeing pros at work, I do. Look at how well it's balanced, look how the taps are equal. A lot of plumbers don't care about that. Well, the back, the uh, back porch, we're gonna close it in so no raccoons can get in there, but it still has to be uh, redone because it's against code. So at this point, we're leaving the siding. That has to be done aftermath. My important project is get their rears back in their house. Two o'clock. We're getting there. Okay, this is beautiful. I mean, I think they're definitely gonna be happy. So we'll just rake up the side, guys, and just clean it up a bit, and we'll uh, pull out the uh, big rocks and get them in the bin so John can get going. I just got off the phone with Dave. The movers have loaded the truck, and I told them not to show up until 4 o'clock, and do not come in the house until I say so. So we'll also need to uh, get two more gallons of the yellow. I'm kicking him out of his own house. This is still my house. As long as I own it at this point, nobody tells me what to do. I can't believe this thing's here. It's felt like a long time, but all of a sudden it's just here. All right. I haven't seen walls in over a year, so that's that's gonna excite me just the walls up. Yeah. Yeah, last time I was at the house was July the 12th, and there was no walls. I just seen my cupboards, and I was excited. I was jumping up and down over <laughs> cupboards. <laughs> uh, I know I lost the hardwood floors, uh, but we can always do that later. I know it's carpeting through the house. And, uh, my brother and I grew up here with my parents, and. Uh, and uh, we took over, and then the kids have been raised there. Back in February, that's what we thought, we're going to lose it, this home. You know, and we thought, what do we tell Dave's mom? It was her house, you know, they didn't lose it. Here, they give it to us, and we're going to lose it. So it was very scary. Would you like your house back? Come on, come take a look. Oh, whoa, whoa, oh my wow. god. Wow. Oh. I can't believe I've been here. This is great. This is beautiful. Oh, this is so real. Wow. I didn't think I was going to get emotional. This is beautiful. Wow, Mike, we owe you our life. Unbelievable. Well, I'm glad that we can make you this little feel hard better. With floors. I just... Come on, let's take a look. Come on, give me a hand. Oh my God, this is a completely different home. Oh, this is absolutely beautiful. This is my dream kitchen. It is oh, nice, this isn't is it? This is amazing. This is a totally different house. I don't know why I got to thank you. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. Because I know you worked really hard. And I didn't we want did. anybody There's... killing themselves over i trying to put this house back together again. This is fantastic. Are you ready to move back in? I'm ready. <laughs> I don't care if I have to sleep on the floor. I'm <laughs> and I'm moving in today. Let's go see upstairs. Where do you want to go? This is just beautiful. 
Ooh, I like this the color. Really That's amazing. Cool. That's Ooh. the original. Ooh, cookie flavor. Like your room. Wow, this awesome. looks great. Oh, this is Ooh. my room. It's so cool. Yeah. Oh, this is really cool. I just started that. Oh, this is open concept look there for about a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is great. I just started that open concept look there for about a year. Yeah. This is great. I don't feel like I'm in the old house. This is different. This isn't the old house. No, nope, not is, anymore. This is your new house. That bottle is for you. <laughs> That's for you. I keep saying you're the angel that fell from the sky because with their prayers, I think that's how you landed here. Wow. Extremely happy ending. They're home. Now I can go on and help somebody else. It was a nightmare, but looking at this, is, I can say it's worth it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm not too happy, on the other hand, that uh, this contractor is still on the loose. To everyone that worked on this house, my whole family thanks you for giving our house back. And I know everyone worked so hard and long hours. And um, I don't know, I think all you guys are, are wonderful. I love you all. So, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. These are all the permits. You can steal that much money from somebody and get away with it, and that's not a good sign. Something has to be changed. Thanks, thanks a million. It was a pleasure. <laughs> I'm glad we could uh, make it right for you. I wanted to get them home, and uh, well, now I'll sleep better. They're home. <laughs>